Hey, how's it going? Parker Walbeck here with FullTimeFilmmaker.com and today I'm going to be sharing with you my top 10 things to look for when buying an on-camera monitor. And I'll be giving you the pros and cons between different monitors that I recommend in different price ranges and specifically we'll be looking at four different brands in both a 7-inch and 5-inch options for each. The Small HD Focus 7 and Focus 5, the Atomos Ninja Infermo 7 and Ninja 5, the Andy Cine R7 and the A6 Plus, and the Desview R7 and the Desview Mavo P5. And just FYI, none of these brands are sponsoring this video. I don't have any bias, just sharing my honest opinions on the best monitors in different categories. And I'll be giving you my overall thoughts at the end on which ones I'd buy for what. But first, let me answer the question of why would you need to buy a camera monitor in the first place? Or can you just go without one? The main reasons you'd buy one is for external recording or for enhanced visual tools to be able to nail focus and exposure more accurately. Most camera screens are too small and too dim, so it's hard to tell if your subject is in focus and correctly exposed. So if you find yourself struggling to nail focus or exposure correctly in camera or need to record externally, then getting an external monitor might be a good solution for you. But there's hundreds of options out there, so the next biggest question I get is which one of the many should I buy? So let's now dive in and talk about the 10 things that I look for when shopping for an on-camera monitor. The first thing to look for, obviously, is price. The prices of external monitors can vary anywhere from $100 to $3,000, and just like with anything, generally speaking, you get what you pay for. On the higher budget end, the two main monitor brands that rule the market are the Small HD and Automos. Both are great reliable brands. The ones that we have here range from $300 to $800, but they do have even higher end ones that will cost you two dollars to $3,000. However, most of you with your setups wouldn't need or be able to take advantage of the features that the really high end options have to offer. And then on the lower end, you have great options like Desview and Anycine, and Feel World, all pretty similar in price and features. The ones we have here range from $100 to $300, and we didn't include Feel World in this comparison because, in our opinion, they aren't as nice as Andy Cine and not as cheap as Desview, but they are a good option in between the two. But these are our favorite brands we've tested and the prices that each of these come at, and we'll now show you what features each has so you can determine which ones are worth the extra dollars. But once you've decided on budget, the next thing to look for is size and weight. Most monitors come in two sizes, a 5-inch and a 7-inch inch. A 5-inch monitor is definitely a great step up from most camera screens, but in our opinion can still be too small at times to see focus and exposure well. Having used both 5 and 7-inch monitors, that extra 2 inches actually makes a pretty big difference in our opinion, so if your budget allows, we highly recommend going with a 7-inch. The drawback to a 7-inch, however, is that it will be bulkier, it will be heavier, and it will be more expensive, and this will impact which gimbals you can use it on. If you're just using the monitor in a studio on a tripod like I am now, then definitely you'd want to go with a 7-inch. But when I'm on a glide cam or a motorized gimbal, the monitor can quickly add a lot of weight to an already heavy setup, making it difficult to shoot with comfortably for long periods of time. With a glide cam, it's going to be harder to do a big 7-inch monitor as it will start to get really top-heavy, but with the Ronin-S, we prefer putting a dual handle accessory on there, and with that, a 7-inch monitor is very manageable. And we'll put in the description links to all the accessories we use when putting monitors on our gimbals. But in general, if weight is going to be an issue for you, a lighter 5-inch might make more sense. I will say I first bought a 5-inch monitor for my RED camera and after a year I got annoyed with how hard it was to see focus and eventually upgraded to a 7 inch and it made a world of a difference and was worth the added weight and price. So I wish I would have saved the money of buying the 5 inch and just gone straight to the 7 inch. As far as weight goes obviously the lighter the better for ease of shooting and as you can see by the numbers on screen Atomos monitors are almost two times heavier than their competitors and we'll talk about why later but that's a big drawback to be aware of if you choose Atomos. The rest seem to be relatively similar in weight with the 5 inch monitor monitors being around 6 ounces and the 7 inch monitors being around 13 ounces. Moving on now to the third thing to look for is screen brightness. Every external monitor has brightness measured in nits. The higher the nit count, the brighter the screen can get, which is important if you film in direct sunlight as it can be hard to see the screen if it doesn't get bright enough. The dimmest monitors I've seen hit about 300 nits and the brightest I've seen get up to around 2000 nits. My 7 inch red monitor has a nit count of only 350 and it's still gotten the job done great for me over the years of shooting with the indoors and outdoors, but it's definitely not ideal and is hard to see sometimes in direct sunlight. I've found that around a thousand nits is about where you want to be to be able to see well in sunlight. And here's a look at these monitors with their respective nit counts so you can see what you get for the money. As you can see, the Desview 5 inch has the dimmest screen at 450 nits and the Andy Cine Ultra Bright 7 inch has the brightest screen at 2200 nits. And you can see how those compare next to each other. And to give you a reference point, the iPhone 11 has 811 nits at full brightness. 
and I can personally always see my phone screen just fine in sunlight. So I do think 2000 nits is a little bit overkill. Sure, it will be nice to have, but not at the expense of draining the battery twice as fast, which is our next category to look for, which is battery life. Pretty much every external monitor will have to run off of its own battery, and generally the five inch monitor can only take one battery while the seven inch monitors can usually take two. All of these and most monitors take Sony NP batteries, and after letting each of these monitors run on the same big Sony battery, here are the respective battery lives for each. As you can see, the seven inch monitors generally ran out faster, so something to consider when choosing between five and seven inch, but the small HD seven inch surprisingly outlasted some of the five inch competitors. And out of the five inchers, small HD was well ahead of the pack, and the Atomos five inch died out faster than its competing seven inch monitors. So for battery life, big point goes to small HD, and it's a big con for Atomos. Not to mention, Atomos also has a fan that you can hear, which can be annoying. It's not super loud, but I was surprised to hear it buzz the first time I turned it on. Also something to keep in mind, none of these get very hot to the touch, except for the 2000 nit Andy Cine. Because it's twice as bright as the rest, it gets a lot hotter to the touch. So hot, in fact, that it actually hurt my hand a little. So definitely a trade-off to be aware of at that 2000 nit range. Moving on to the fifth thing to look for is external recording ability. Out of these monitors we're testing out, the only brand that can record externally is Atomos. So for example, if you have a camera like an EOS R or a Nikon Z6, if you want to record into an external recorder instead of into your SD card, you can access better camera specs like shooting in 10-bit color depth instead of only only eight. And oftentimes, if your camera has 30 minute recording limit, an external recorder will light record as long as the battery and the SD card last. For us, since we use mostly 1DX Mark IIs, that doesn't really have any spec bumps by recording externally. So this isn't a big deal breaker for us, but for some of you, it may be a big deal breaker. Keep in mind, if you do plan recording externally, you'll also need to buy a separate SSD like the Angelbird Atom X, which is what I have that cost me around 200 bucks for 500 gigs. Plus you'll need to buy a $10 cable to dump the footage onto your computer. So if you plan on recording externally, Atomos is going to be your best option on the market. But of course, being able to record does come with its drawbacks of being heavier, louder, worse battery life, and so on. So if you don't need to record externally, I personally wouldn't recommend Atomos. Moving on to number six on the list is resolution. Most of these screens are 1080p resolution. The only one that is 720p is a small HD five inch. So drawback to be aware of there. And no, 4K isn't necessary, even though your camera shoots 4K because these screens are all so small, you wouldn't even be able to tell the difference between 1080p and 4K resolution on a five or a seven inch screen. But you can notice a difference between 720p and 1080p. So I recommend at least getting 1080p. Moving on to number seven on the list is tools and features. This is one of the main reasons you'd get an external monitor is for the assistant tools that the monitor gives you that your DSLR may not like focus peaking, zebras, false colors, waveforms, RGB parades, letterbox overlays, LUT previews, audio meters, horizon indicators, etc. Automos and Small HD are going to give you the most features and will give you the best, most accurate color and image quality. Andy Cine has a decent amount of features as well, but Desview, particularly this 5-inch, only has the basics. So this is definitely an area where you can see why it's a lot cheaper. Now, we won't go into every feature and who has what. Just decide which features are most important to you and make sure the one you're buying has those ones that you want. But they will all have the basics like focus peaking and exposure assist. Moving on to number eight on the list is build quality. This is another area where you can see what you're getting for the money. Atomos builds tanks, too tanky in fact in my opinion, as it causes them to be twice the weight, but they definitely are going to be your most sturdy. Small HD I feel like is a perfect hybrid between high quality fill while still using light material so that's not heavy. Andy Cine comes in third, being a little bit cheaper than Small HD, and Desview once again feels the cheapest, but that's expected at the low price. And then moving on to number nine on the list is touchscreen and camera controls. Some of these monitors are controlled via a touchscreen and some make you use buttons. Personally, I think having a touchscreen is a big deal, makes it a lot easier to navigate and use while on the go. All of these monitors we're testing today are touchscreen except for the Andy Cine Ultra Bright and the Desview monitors. And they're all pretty similar in responsiveness to the touchscreen. But a drawback to be aware of of the touchscreen models is that they will get dirtier with fingerprints on them all the time. Also be aware that the smaller five inch monitors sometimes it's harder to press the buttons on the screen because the buttons are too small. So that's one pro of having the seven inch touch monitor is that it's easier to tap the right button on the screen. One thing to be aware of too is even if your external monitor is touchscreen, doesn't mean it can 
control touch to focus for your camera. That's one of the biggest drawbacks for me when I'm using an external monitor is that my Canon cameras have dual pixel autofocus and I like to be able to touch the screen to set my focus and correct me if I'm wrong anybody, but as far as I know, there aren't any external monitors that can control dual pixel autofocus on a monitor. You have to use the camera screen for that. Likewise, for camera controls, most monitors aren't going to allow you to change your camera settings for the monitor unless it's specifically compatible with your camera. Like I know, Small HD has their Cine line that is compatible with RE and RED cameras, but you're gonna pay a higher price for that compatibility. So just some drawbacks to be aware of in general with using external monitors. Moving on now to our 10th and final thing to look for in monitors is ease of use. Which monitor has the best user interface, easiest to use on the go and all of that. After having used each of these monitors, hands down the easiest to use straight out of the box and shortest learning curve is the small HD. They have their own software that is sleek and super simple to use. I would compare it to like Apple software. Automos takes second place on this, also a great menu system, easy to navigate through, but not quite as good as Small HD in my opinion. Andy Cine takes third, a decent menu system, though much more watered down. And then Desview is super basic, not much you can do settings wise. So big advantage to Small HD in my opinion, not to mention they have their HDMI cable ports tucked into the monitor. So there's less of a chance of it getting ripped out. Some don't like this, but I personally Personally think it's sleek and more practical to use. And then a side note, we also tested latency, but none of them seem to have much more lag than any other. So at least for the ones we tested here, they all did a good job with this. But there you have it. Those are the top 10 things that I would look for when buying an external monitor. Obviously there's more things to look for and you can mention those in the comments below, but I'd say these are my top 10 most important things that I would personally care about if I were to buy an external monitor. So which one should you buy? Here are the recommendations for the following categories. Best overall monitor. I'm gonna give this one to the small HD Focus 7. I like the screen size not too heavy, good resolution, great battery life, doesn't record externally, but I don't need that. It's plenty bright, touchscreen has the tools and features I need, and it's the easiest to use. The Small HD Focus 5 is also great, but quite a bit more limiting in my opinion. I'd only get the 5 if I needed the smaller form factor and needed to save some cash. Next category for best external recorder, this one goes to Automos. If you need to record, go with Automos. Again, I always recommend the 7 inch over the 5 inch, but if you need to save on weight and money, 5 inch will work as well. Our next category is best value, best bang for buck. This one's going to be Andy Cine. For what you get for the money, I think this rules this category. They give you great performance at not quite as cheap as some, but still at a very low price. Plus the A6 Plus is actually a 5.5 inch screen, so it's a little bit bigger than the rest of the five inchers. As for the ultra bright seven inch version, if you need that extra brightness, this gives you 2,200 nits for under $300. So that's a great bang for buck. Just be aware of that shorter battery life and the hot to the touch, like I mentioned. And then our last category is best budget monitor. If price is your biggest factor, go with the Desview Mavo 5. It's one of the cheapest on the market at just $130. Not super bright, not many features, but bright enough to get the job done as a monitor bigger than your camera screen. And for double the price at around $260 currently, you can get a seven inch monitor for much cheaper than most out there. So Desview is my recommendation for cheapest on the market and still usable. But there you have it folks. Hopefully this was helpful to help you decide which monitor is right for you. Obviously there's more options out there, but those are my favorites in their respective categories. After having our hands on all of these monitors. Everyone on my team agrees that we would all choose the small HD 7 inch. So that's our personal favorite. And also big thanks to Adorama for sending all of these monitors for us to test out. I provided links in the description to buy each of these. Lastly, let us know what gear you'd like to see us review next. And for more tips and tutorials on buying and using gear to its fullest potential, make sure to check out fulltimefilmmaker.com, our ultimate online film school, or you can check out our free one hour filmmaking training by clicking over here. Also guys, don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. And if you have any further questions, please let me know.